I don't know if you guys saw One Punch Man this week, but uh, Saitama defeats the guy like he's in an episode of Keijo, and it's just, it's great. Check it out. Nowhere near as attractive. I like bald guys. In this week's chapter of One Piece, Sanji has finally decided to rebel. He's got a special picnic basket for Luffy, but I honestly think the coolest thing about this week's chapter was probably just seeing Zoro on a motorcycle. Hands down, one of my favorite cover pages we've had in a while is Zoro on the motorcycle. You know if there... I don't even know if there are motorcycles in One Piece, but if there were, that's the vehicle Zoro would ride. Yeah. There was that one douchebag who looked a lot like Sanji, or more, he was made to look like the crappy version of Sanji. Oh, yeah. He and he had, had that one, like, weird, like, water bike. Okay. And then the there was also... Mm -hmm, and then there was also the shitty filler arc, which involved these chicks who literally had, like, swordfish, like, motorcycles that they could use on the water. And then there's also, like, the hover... the cloud people hoverboards. Exactly. So, it, it's safe to say this type of technology could probably exist in here, but I demand now that Zoro actually gets a motorcycle. That would be so awesome to see him actually fighting, using his sword style, driving around on the motorcycle. <laughs> it, it, it's not too often that stuff, like, on the cover page even comes to fruition. Hell, it's basically just the uh, creator of the series taking requests from the fans to yeah. draw a really wacky image. So, we're probably never going to see anything come of that. That being said, this week's chapter was okay. It was really wordy, and it's basically just a lot of people running around. It opens up with Jinbei and Nami, who are continuing to run away from Big Mom's crew, basically just attacking them left and right, Nami actually being pretty useful to electrifying all of them, and then unfortunately electrifying Chopper in the process. Basically, it's just them meeting up with each other again as they try to find Sanji and Luffy and get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah, so with this chapter, you're seeing everyone kind of meet up. That's the momentum I'm seeing everything come to fruition here. You got all that group meeting up. You have Luffy on his own, but at the end, you have Sanji like deciding he's definitely going to go find Luffy. And uh, who else is missing? We have Brooke. Mm -hmm. still, not, well, well, Brooke we isn't Brooke. missing. He, he's still hanging out with a uh, big mom. But he's all honestly like the hardest one to retrieve because he's yeah. next to like, you know, he's Prince, he's Peach. And next yeah. to Bowser. You know, like, <laughs> Basically, yeah, that's a good way to put it. You know, just role reversal. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's 2017. Women have power now, okay? <laughs> nothing, Corey? You I got nothing on that one. Cisgendered white male. Anyway, so, <laughs> yeah, even after that, we, we really, there was a lot of slow points in this chapter for me. Like, you had um, all of Big Mom's crew looking around, and the one gooey guy not wanting to admit that he let Luffy out and everything. He's like, I don't know. We probably got everyone. You know, and I, I just imagine that guy's a big dumb voice with goo coming off of him. Yeah, you know? I mean, they're all going to be really goofy. And honestly, they're pretty stupid for just like allowing themselves to believe, oh yeah, well, everybody's gone. We got rid of the intruders. They're all around still kicking ass and doing lots of crazy things. And going back to the whole Big Mom and Brooke scene, um, something that's really interesting about that is that Big Mom and Pudding are just talking about everything out loud. And Brooke is clearly hearing all of this. I mean, and, and it's been established that Big Mom and Brooke uh, have communicated with each other. They can hear each other. So this is an instance where, like, Big Mom's like, oh, he's a skeleton. He doesn't have ears. He can't hear shit. He's hearing all of this stuff that's about to go on, and they're going over the entire plan where basically as soon as they're about to kiss during the wedding, Pudding is going to reveal her third eye, and then she's going to pull out her gun and just blast Sanji right in the face, and then all the fucking gangsters are just going to come out and start blowing everyone away. It's going to just be this basically a red wedding if you will i was gonna say yeah it's a lot like the red wedding you know they're mm -hmm. gonna use the backdrop of the wedding to get everyone's guard down and then they're just gonna blast everyone in the face and um pudding has said that these bullets will hurt those super soldiers because we saw it like go through the sanji sister's leg so mm -hmm. it is a good plan i mean it's a shitty thing to do yeah. but it's a good plan but they're gonna have cake so it's all good um, and then, basically, the last part of the chapter, which is what I felt was probably the most interesting thing, is that Sanji is sneaking around Big Mom's castle with this picnic basket, which he's going to give to Luffy, basically a care package, which either he's doing this because he wants to reunite with Luffy, or this is going to be like his tribute to Luffy, his, this is your last meal, as me and my family are about to go out in the blaze of glory, which I have a feeling it's going to be something like that, like he's going to confront Luffy, here, eat this, and then he says he's going to go off and do his own thing, they're both going to butt heads for a little bit, power of friendship, and then eventually Sanji will come back. If you ask me, I almost think Sanji's already back, you know, like he, as he realizes he made all of Luffy's favorite things, or mm -hmm. not, I think it was the crew's favorite things, no, I don't quite remember, but as he's remembering that, he's like, I got to do this, I got to find these guys. And I think he also was reminded that Luffy said he was going to stand in this exact same spot until uh, Sanji came back. We had no Luffy 
this chapter. Mm -hmm. He did not exist in the world this chapter. Mm -hmm. So, um, can we confirm that he was on his way back to that spot? Probably. I think there was even one panel where you see maybe, like, a very super undetailed version of him running around. Uh But aside from that, like, we really don't get any Luffy in this chapter. No, and we also don't get any, uh, Frankie... Or like anything. Or none of those. Well, none of those guys are here right oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're not on that island. So, but who was the. Uh, they're off doing their own thing. I always forget the leopard guy that defeated uh, the Pedro. Th- th- he th- is in the chapter, but he, you know, he's basically this there to, to spout exposition and be like, whoa, holy crap. Uh, you just basically fried Chopper. What the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> Jinbei is there and everything. And, uh,. And also, I'd say my favorite thing, aside from the whole Zoro being on a motorcycle, is definitely Sanji just kicking the shit out of Bobbins in this week's chapter, who... Bobbins has always been a really creepy-looking character to me. I get this, like, Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe from him with a weird mask that he has. Mm -hmm. But Luffy just... Not Luffy. Sanji just absolutely obliterates his face at the very end, and it's a really satisfying panel. Definitely uh, one of the cooler action scenes I've seen from the last couple of chapter uh, chapters, but it was very brief. You know it's not the best chapter when our favorite thing is the cover page. But <laughs> let me just say, this one for me is not a bad chapter. It's just a great build-up chapter to the chapters that I'm looking forward to next week. Mm-hmm. You know, when Luffy and Sanji meet up and they start working that shit out. Or everyone, um, they come out of the mirror world to grab more people. You know, like, there's a lot left to do here. So let's see what happens. And uh, this one's just 2 out of 5 for me. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. It's just an average chapter. There's definitely a lot of things to like about this chapter, if anything. I still think, visually speaking, it's a really great arc. Um, Especially just the scene with all of Big Mom's children hanging out with... uh, even Tamago, who's even more chicken-like, if that was even possible in this chapter. They're just really weird-looking, and they're really fun to look at. You can tell that they uh, spent a lot of time creating all of these characters. Mm-hmm. And that final bit at the end with Sanji just kicking the shit out of Bobbins was really satisfying and really impactful. But it's also going to end up biting him in the ass because he caused such a commotion that all of the guards are going to go after him. So uh, things are definitely escalating in this chapter. But again, this one was basically just a build-up, and it sort of felt like we were sort of going through the motions again this week. I also feel like Big Mom's crew suffers from the too many crew members syndrome. And that's like, there's a lot of cool dudes and a lot of them have good powers, but like, it seems like because there are so many, they can't develop them all and mm-hmm. they don't all seem very powerful. They mm-hmm. just really kind of seem like the dumb goons running around that have a cool design. So I kind of want to see that get developed a little more as well. But uh, again, two out of five for me, not mm-hmm. the, I, I don't want to say it's a bad chapter. I just, uh, uh, I feel like this chapter is going to be a good lead up. And if I could read this chapter and the next chapter together, I wouldn't mind this one as much. But this is a standalone thing, not so great. It's always better when they're back-to-back. And the whole thing about Big Mom's children and everything, like having backstories, I think they've sort of, like, you know, written themselves into a hole right here. Like, they really just don't have the time to go into the backstories of these characters. And really, do we need the backstory of I Opera the Goo Man? No, like, I just no. want him to have a good fight that's not finished off off camera. Exactly. And not one punch. And there's just way too many damn kids. That's the problem. And it's made even worse by the fact that almost every single thing in this freaking arc is alive, thanks to Big Mom's powers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Even, uh, you know, Prometheus Zeus and her hat Napoleon are uh, severely damaged in their last battle. Uh, The the son is mentioning that his wound is opening up, which is so damn strange. Uh, But yeah, it's hard to to, to pick a favorite when you don't really know much about them outside of the face value and how ridiculous they look and what their powers could possibly be. Maybe this is something that the anime version can expand upon. I'm sure it's something they're going to do, period, because that's just the way they do things in the anime. And, of course, it'd be a great excuse to, uh, you know, basically halt a little bit so we don't catch up to the manga. But we're just even barely getting into that arc in the anime at this point, so I'm interested to see how they're going to handle that. But this is still an entertaining read, and if you are a One Piece fan, I do recommend that you do check it out. Um, but don't expect anything too exciting. But then again, that's just our opinions. You guys might think something different. If you did like this chapter, please tell us why in the comment section below. If you did not like this chapter, please tell us why in the comment section below. And uh, make sure to also tell us what you hope to see in the rest of this arc as we're moving forward, because things are definitely going to get crazier from here. I have a feeling, so let's just wait and see that unfold. You guys got our scores. Thank you so much for watching this review. We really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for everything One Piece related anime and manga reviews, as well as a lot of other reviews on anime series that we do check out. And of course, leave us a couple of comments. We would love to interact with you guys. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. Until next time, guys, we will see you. And as always, stay dandy, baby.